Okay, I think we're live. Hello everybody, my name is Tom Willis and I am a lighting designer and programmer based in Melbourne, Australia. Thanks for joining me. We're in lockdown at the moment, there's not much theatre going on, so as a bit of a, a lockdown project this week I've decided to make five videos in five days, roughly around five minute duration each, fingers crossed. I tend to blabber on a bit so it's going to be a good challenge for me to keep them condensed and uh, they're going to uh, the topic of the five videos is going to be tips and tricks that I use as a lighting programmer using EOS uh, ETC EOS software that's uh, what we tend to use as our main lighting control software in Australia for theatre and I think that's pretty universal around the world. It's it's generally a toss-up between ETC or MA. There's a few hogs in it and a couple of other bits and pieces. But ETC is is the one that I prefer to use. So uh, today we're going to be talking about... I'm going to start my timer. Five minutes. Here we go. Uh, today we're going to be talking about moving lights in your show file and how I set up some focus palettes to help speed up my programming. Um, but I don't use focus palettes in the way that you might think. So, let's dive in. Now, I have a uh, an example show file here uh, with a lovely augmented 3D visualization for us, a little proscenium arch theater. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn on my fixtures. Need to. There we go. Okay, so you can see I've got some overhead fixtures. I've got a couple of front of house fixtures and a couple of like ladder boxy kind of. Um, side shots and to begin with and EOS Augmented makes this uh, this process uh, really simple what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all my lights and I'm going to shift click I'm going to put them in a kind of a downstage center position and then I'm going to record that into my downstage center focus palette bang like that and then I'm going to go along and I'm going to do that for my downstage IP do another one for downstage prompt side. We'll do another one for mid stage center. As you can see, using the shift click functionality in Augmented makes this super quick. If you were dialing in all these values manually, it would take you a lot longer. And oftentimes uh, we have to do that depending on what desk we're using and um, whether we have Augmented set up properly. But I think it's fast becoming a tool um, that's going to be used uh, a lot more in the future um, to do stuff like this. Anyway, there we have it. That, that, that's, let's just use that as a starting point. Now, importantly, I'm not going to be using these focus palettes in my show programming per se. They're not going to be recorded into my show cue list. What I am going to do is use them as... Um, template positions from which I can build my uh, my show focuses. So what I mean by that is, let's turn everything off for a second. Say my lighting designer goes to me and uh, comes to me and says, okay, Tom, I want you to grab my backlight fixtures, which are seven and eight, and I want you to focus them onto this new prop, this new um, set piece that's appeared downstage OP. No worries. Bang. Just like that. Very, very quick. Now, they may not be in the exact right position, but they're in the neighborhood. They're nice and close, and with a little bit of, of fine-tuning using my encoders, and then a little bit of a, an adjustment of my zoom and edge. I might put a shutter in there or two, depending on what we're doing. I now have the focus that I need for my show. What I tend to do once we get to this point is I will actually record this focus position as a preset because what I like to do, if we grab those fixtures, seven through eight, I like to minus intensity and minus color and then record that as a preset. And then I'll label that. Um, my labeling convention, I tend to go, you know, uh, scene one, downstage OP bed, and then I'll make reference to the fixtures used in that label. And that's how I document all my focus positions for a show. Um, so you can see that using your template focus palettes, uh, you can really quickly throw your movers around and build new 
focus palettes. It's a lot quicker than just having your fixtures in their previous focus and then manually moving them potentially halfway across your stage using encoders. Now, a couple of things to be wary of when you do this process, and a couple of you probably already caught onto this already, is that just doing shift click on the augmented window seems really quick and easy, but you can, you can come across a couple of problems and I'm gonna show you what they are now. If I select all my fixtures, in fact, I'm not gonna select all my fixtures, I'm just gonna select the ones to which this is a really uh, inherent problem, and they are my overhead fixtures. My, my front of house fixtures and my side fixtures, generally, um, you don't need to worry about this too much. Um, no, actually, I take that back. I'm gonna show you everything because I think the, the side fixtures will have done something a little bit wrong here as well, and we need to fix this. So let's just grab everything, one through 12, turn it at full, and we're gonna put it in our downstage center position. Now you'll see as I move through my focuses, See those lights that are kind of bowing out and then coming back in? And you can see there that a whole lot of them did a nice big ballyhoo. Um, and then some more ballyhoos, right? What's going on there? Okay, so basically there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's more than one way to focus a moving head fixture um, to a specific location on stage. Of course, you can use a co different combinations of pan and tilt to do it. And what you need to do when you're building, what I find is super useful when you are building these focus palettes is to be very particular about what combinations of pan and tilt you are gonna be using. Um, this means that your lights always move in a consistent manner. When you go to focus them, the encoder is always gonna turn them in a way that is expected. The tilt is always gonna tilt them in a way that is expected. Uh, and when you come across those inevitable pinch points where your moving light has to flip to get from one position to the next, we can define where they are and we can also mitigate when that happens. I'm just gonna show you, I've made another page. Um, now this guy I've actually spent a bit more time on and I've ensured that all these focuses are calibrated correctly. So if we go here, you'll see that my movers are tracking between positions in a much more orderly fashion, okay? Now you can see there's still some minor kind of blips, okay? I'll give you one example. I'm just gonna change my camera view and we're gonna go overhead here. And I'm gonna turn off pretty much everything except for, I'm gonna pick, uh, let's go with lamp four here. Now you can see with lamp four, uh, when we focus him into our OP and center positions, it's not an issue. He's, he's tracking fine. He's moving uh, between uh, the two focuses in the most efficient way possible. But once we get the positions that are kind of underneath him, kind of bunched up close to him, you'll find that he starts doing things like this, right? Now, the reason I've done it that way is so that he can track smoothly between as many points as possible, but it does mean that this movement upstage prompt side to mid stage prompt side is um, very bulgy, right? Now we can get around this by creating a secondary uh, focus palette. Uh, as you can see, I've got my upstage prompt side flip, and if we use him as opposed to our regular upstage prompt side, see how now the transition between the two positions is nice and smooth. So if we had a moment in the show where we wanted for that mover to track somebody smoothly from mid-stage prompt side to upstage prompt side, we could use that upstage prompt side flip palette as a starting point to build those focus positions. Overall, I find this system uh, saves me a lot of time when I'm programming. Um, it generally takes a little bit of time to build. Uh, if you have nine or even 12 uh, starting focus palettes and you have 20 lamps in your rig, then that's potentially, you know, between well, what have we got, 180 and 240 individual moving light focuses that you have to do. Augmented um, obviously makes it a lot quicker, but there's still a fair amount of time invested in that initial setup but I guarantee you that um, if you can invest a couple of hours before your plot and it saves you um, anywhere near that amount of time in your plot, 
where people are waiting on you, where your lighting designer is waiting on you, where the theater is paying for the venue and all the crew. Uh, the more time you can save in the theater, the better, the less stressful, the more enjoyable the experience will be. So that's one little trick that I use to speed up my programming. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you found that interesting. We went way over five minutes. I'm really sorry about that. I will try and do better on the next video. Um, have a good one, guys, and I will see you soon. Thanks a lot.